Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a brief introduction to tessellations and how tessellations work, what my expectations are for you when it comes to creating your own tessellations, and what exactly are tessellations. I'm not really sure. Actually, I do know. I'm the art teacher, of course I know, but I'm going to explain to you what tessellations are, uh, how you make a tessellation, who invented tessellations, and actually, you already know what a tessellation is. It's already inside your brain. You've already seen tessellations. Um, but I'm just going to introduce them to you, and you'll be like, oh, I know what those are. I can do that. Of course you can, because you're smart. As I've been telling you guys all along this whole year, all of my students are very, very smart, and you're capable, and you can do this. So with further ado, let me go to my screen share. Boop -a -doop -a -doop, Google Chrome. Share away. Boop, there we are. All righty. Well, that's boring. Let's go to here and let's go. No, I don't know. Where to go. Come on. All right. Do, do, do. So let's go to tessellation. T-E-S-S-E-L-L-T-I-O-N. Tessellations. Let's see what those things are. Of course, I spelled it wrong. I added one more S. And let's go to images. So a tessellation is really simple. All it is is just a repeating shape, the same shape repeated over and over and fits together like a puzzle. There are some that are very, very complex. There are some that are very, very simple. It's basically a geometric shape. I don't know why that one's not showing up. It's basically just a geometric shape. Most tessellations that look really good, uh, they turn into a picture. They're like, oh, that's like fish and birds, something like that. Oh, look at that. Those are kitty cats and dogs. See that, see the dog in there? Isn't that cool? Oh, those look like lizards. Oh, those look like cubes. Oh, those look like leaves. But the trick is, is they all fit together. So in all reality, this is this, just the same shape repeated over and over. That's a very, very simple tessellation. That is a very, very simple tessellation. Just a geometric shape that fits together, like boop, just like that. Just fits together nice and neat. There's no gaps. So who invented tessellations? Who invented tessellations. This guy, M.C. Escher. Let's go to all. This guy, M.C. Escher. Who invented tessellations? So M.C. Escher, uh, he's from the, ne the Netherlands, the Netherlands, and he invented them. Now, granted, tessellations have been around for a long, long, long time. They've been decorated through churches and mosques throughout the ages for thousands of years. People have been using tessellations for a long time, a long time. But M.C. Escher, he's the guy that really brought it to the forefront. He's an artist, and he's also a mathematician. There he is again, good old M.C. Escher. There he is. Born in 1898, died in 1972. Really interesting guy. And he made some really interesting tessellations. In fact, you've probably seen some of his work before. You'd be like, oh, I've seen that before. And he makes, he likes to make repeating stuff. He didn't just make tessellations. He also made pictures like this. They're like, oh, I've seen that before. I remember when I was in high school and I looked at MC Escher's work, I just went Guga over it. I loved it. It's kind of like an optical illusion. Looks like it's going back into space, yet it's not. It's a flat plane. I'm like, whoa, that's really weird. That's a sculpture. To, that's a really famous one that used to be on t-shirts back in the 90s. So he was a mathematician and he was also an artist and he loved tessellations. That's a picture he did of himself and there's a tessellation that he made. So with that being said, we are going to look at tessellations and how to make them. Now, I'm going to give you guys a separate video on how to make tessellations, but I figure I could just type it in. How to, let's back it up to make a tessellation. There we go. Making a tessellation is actually pretty easy. In fact, you can just go to images or videos for that matter. And there's a ton of lessons of which I will contribute my own to this. Boop -a -doop. But basically you just get a piece of square paper like this one. Let me actually get my little video, my little head out of the way. Oh my gosh, I've got a floating head. I know, funny, huh? All right, so here we are. You just get a square piece of paper and you draw a line on it. And then you cut it out and you move it to the other side. Boop. 
and then you do the same thing to the top. Cut it out, move it to the other side. Now this part, uh, whenever you see this new shape, that can be tessellated, and you have to use your imagination to create something out of it. Now, we've been using our imagination all year. Imagination is a vital component and a pre-built app into your brain that helps you create something from nothing. So inside your head, you say to yourself, hmm, what can I possibly make? And inside your head, it makes something. Uh, I'm not really sure how the imagination works. I was just born with one and I like to use it often. You know, when I ride my bike or I'm talking to somebody, I invent conversations or I invent things inside my head. And the process of art is taking the things that you see inside your imagine, imagination and you physically make them. And that, that's art. So with that being said, you can actually get on, back to tessellations, you can get on the Google, of which I'm showing you how to now, and make a tessellation. You can just look at a lot of different videos. I would like for you to practice with one first. And that's a really simple one. And again, these things tessellate. And of course, I'm expecting you guys to use your imagination to create something really interesting from this. When I say really interesting, I mean really interesting to you. And you can be as, right off the bat, I mean, squeeze out a rough draft, figure out how it works. And let me show you my expectations when it comes to a high school tessellation. So I'm gonna just keep tessellation up there, delete that, delete, and just type in high school tessellation. Oops. And let's take a look at what other high school students have made. Now, when I typed in high school, this is actually junior high or middle school. So this is beyond, not beyond, below my expectations for what my high school students can do. Now, I was looking through here and I noticed, yep, that's too easy. This is right on par of what my expectations is for my, for my high school students. That's something my high school students can completely create. And you might be asking me, Mr. West, does it have to be something I recognize or can it just be a bunch of abstract shapes? Something like this. Yeah, you can do something like that. This looks like it took effort and time. Can it be something as easy as this? That's like right on the borderline. That's like scraping. Like, I'd have to talk with you personally over a Google Meet be like, uh, you know, but I know for a fact, the majority of my students can do something, um, can do something like where to go, like that. No problem, no problem. Well, it's gonna take effort. I wouldn't say a problem, I would say effort. It takes time. So to complete something like this on like a piece of paper, because honestly, I'm not expecting you guys to have drawing paper at your house, you know, just on a notebook paper like this, I'm guessing it should take right around maybe an hour. That's after you've built the tessellation and figured out what you're gonna make with it. The whole project all in all should take you right around, if you're doing a really good job, mm, about three hours. You know, in my classroom, I would have expected you to take three to four class periods. So, and that's in, inside my classroom. So between three and four hours. So a really, really, really good tessellation, something I'd be like, whoa, that is amazeballs. That's just incredible. That, that's crazy sauce. Now, I actually do have students that create, can create something like that, and more than likely will, and they're just gonna be like, yep, I just busted this out, Mr. West, no problem. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. That's really good. But I'm not expecting all of you to create something like this. That's pretty good. That's not bad. But I am I'm expecting something that shows effort. I'm expecting something that shows that you tried. I'm expecting something that shows that you've had imagination and thought into it. So I'd really like you to dig around and figure out what you'd like to make. Of course, you can always high school tessellation project ideas. Take a look at that. That's acceptable. That's beyond expectations, but you can still do something like that. Mr. West, can we create something that looks like this? Yes, you can. Mr. West, can we create something that looks like that? No, you cannot. That is too easy for you. Mr. West, can we create something that looks like this? Borderline. But I do like the fact that it has, uses color for value to make it look like it's popping out. That I like. That's pretty cool. The trick is making it look good. Holy nuts, look at that. 
That's crazy sauce. That's crazy sauce. That's pretty cool. Now we're getting into MC Escher's work. This is MC Escher. Yeah, that's professional. So if you guys have any questions, or if you found one that you like, you can uh, take a screenshot, send it over to me, or you can send me a link to it. Let me get off the share so you guys can see me. There we go. So if you find something that you like, and you're like, Mr. West, can I do something like this? Or can I have help doing something like this? We can set up a, a Google Meet meeting, and I can help you out. Or if you want to try something, just try it. Honestly, the worst thing you can do in art is nothing at all. That is the worst thing you can do. I'd much rather you try to do something than to do nothing. Nothing is definite failure. And remember, the ultimate goal here is to pass. The ultimate goal here is to graduate. So with that being said, keep going, keep drawing. So I think I already gave you guys a video over the calendar. Yes, I did, and I posted that on YouTube. So if you guys have any questions, I got your back, let me know. I'll also be having a meeting today on April 6th at four o'clock. I'm gonna be sending out a link to that on Remind and on my website. If you guys need anything, let me know, I got your back, and I hope to see you drawing soon. Thanks, bye.